Start out with an alkyl or aryl or aromatic halide. Add magnesium, metal. In the presence of ether, or THF, at room temperature, or slightly elevated to maybe 75 to 80 degrees, 75 to 80 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale, not uh, uh, Celsius. And in a mechanism that's still not fully understood, in a mechanism that's not fully understood, but I can give you my take on it, you get this. <clears throat> You put the magnesium in between the carbon and the halogen. It sandwiches itself in between the carbon and the halogen. To give you what's referred to as the Grignard reagent. The key to the Grignard reagent is the fact that you've generated a carbon that can act as a nucleophile. Which means that part of the molecule is going to be seeking a positive charge. Now it's either an induced positive charge or a for real positive charge. Once you have the Grignard reagent, you can store it. As long as you keep it away from water. Of course, water will destroy a Grignard reagent faster than God made little green apples. It's just going to go. And the way it's going to go is, this is going to pull off a hydrogen, since it's positive, and leave the magnesium bromide with an OH. So if we were to be stupid enough to put this compound, this reagent, in with water, what would happen is this pair of electrons would attack this hydrogen. This OH would come down and attack that magnesium. And what you'd wind up getting is benzene, where this is the H that originally was on the water, plus a double salt called magnesium hydroxy bromide, or basic magnesium bromide. Not a good thing to happen because now you've produced something that isn't very useful anymore because it's lost its negative charge. But let's assume that you were successful in isolating the Grignard reagent. You kept it away from water. You're a good boy check and girl check. And you now have the Grignard reagent safely ensconced in your test tube. You now can do several things with it. You can attack something that has an implied or real positive charge. For instance, just to pick something simple and stupid so that we can see how this works, something like propanone. <clears throat> propanone has a real positive charge because that compound can go through resonance. When it goes through resonance, the pair of electrons in the double bond can relocate up to the top of the oxygen or in the empty orbital to give you this. That's a resonance form. And remember, there's a thousand of these to one of these. But the Grignard reagent doesn't care. As soon as one of those positives showed up, it's there. The negative here comes in and attacks that positive. Mm 
Well, the oxygen, not to be outdone, can come up and grab a hold of the magnesium. You sort of have like a double replacement reaction if you want to think of it that way. And what you wind up getting is something that looks like this. The benzene ring is unaffected. There's the oxygen that was originally part of the uh, propanone. There are the two methyl groups that were on the ends. And here's the magnesium alongside the bromine. <clears throat> what you've done is a nucleophilic attack on an implied positive charge due to resonance, if you wanted to use the terminology. But we don't like this because this is a solid. This is an icky, slimy looking, yucky solid. So what you got to do now is you got to have one other thing to do and you've got to do what's called an acid workup. What does that mean? Well, that means you put it in with a light vinaigrette. A light vinaigrette. Not a big bombing hydrochloric, sulfuric, or phosphoric acid vinaigrette that'll just burn you out, but maybe a little acid at about pH 4 or 3. You know, something light for the palate. Just a little bit of sourness. Just to make sure that it's nice and nice. And what happens there is what you would expect. This pulls off the hydrogen, the oxygen comes down here, and what you wind up getting, because it's a light vinaigrette, it's not really, really super acidic, you wind up with this. Plus, which is a precipitate and falls to the bottom of the vial. You form the tertiary alcohol. Now you're not limited to something that has a double bonded oxygen. You can attack other things that have an implied positive charge. Mm-hmm.